Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Nate J.H. Gilbert Sr. He's coming to you this morning from On the Wall. He ministers here from uh, uh, Alpha Vista, Virginia. We're coming to you this morning at our Sunday School Hour. We thank God for you joining us this morning on February the 4th, first Sunday in February. We're studying Lesson 10 this morning out of our King James Version of our Standard Commentary. Our lesson is Faith in the Power of God. Faith in the Power of God. We're studying out of Isaiah 40th chapter, verses 12 through 13, verses 25 through 31. Uh, we have a beautiful lesson this morning. We want to go through our uh, line upon line discussion. We'll get to our introduction as we uh, give you our uh, opening this morning. So let us uh, get into our lesson this morning as we study and as we read. Faith in the power of God coming out of Isaiah 40th chapter, verses 12 through 13 verses 25 through 31. Our scripture reads this morning, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and has meted out heaven of its span and comprehended the dust of the earth in the measure and weighed the mountains in scales and hills in balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord and being counselor has taught him? To whom then will ye liken me or shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high. And behold, who has uh, created these things that bringeth out uh, their host by number? He called them out by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, and not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint is not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He give power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. And even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Uh, may God bless the reading and hearing of his holy and his righteous word. Uh, as we get into our uh, introduction this morning, uh, we're going to look at our lesson aims. Our lesson aims is to be able to list some of the characteristics that, uh, of the creator uh, that, he, that is uniquely his, and then explain some of the implications of those characteristics, suggest an idea for a plan, a worship service that focuses on God as the creator. So as we look at that this morning, we'll get into our introduction. Our introduction says this morning, taking God to court. Ain't that amazing? Mm -hmm. He said back in 2007, this uh, Nebraska State Senator, Ernie Chambers, filed a lawsuit against God. Chambers was seeking a permanent injunction against God, whom Chris uh, Chambers blamed for causing various disasters, natural disasters. The lawsuit uh, further accused God of crime or failing to stop the terroristic threats. Chain uh, uh, stated that he had been tried to contact God about these matters on multiple occasions, <laughs> uh, but had without no success. <laughs> now, this man knew that he had no hope in winning a lawsuit against the Almighty. He filed a lawsuit in an attempt to make a broader point about the wastefulness of some frivolous lawsuits. Uh, the Bible offers us various word pictures of God's heavenly courtroom, uh, certain passages are narratives regarding individuals who are present, one or more, or judge, or jury, or prosecutor, or victim, or defendant. Also, suggested are locations of the courtroom, judgment seat, a witness stand, or uh, etc. And then uh, these serve as warnings regarding who the uh, susceptible to the judgment and who is not. So as we look at our lesson context this morning, as we come out of the Old Testament book of Isaiah, uh, he's one of the first in the group of the five referred as the major prophets in the Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, uh, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And we may wonder why the value of this Old Testament book of prophets is still uh, regarded in the New Testament era. But the days of the prophets are long gone, but we are under this new covenant and not of the old covenant of the Old Testament. The value of the prophets today are firmly established on how many times they were cited by Jesus and the authors of the New Testament. One clue the value today is aware of how of these books are quoted how many times they are quoted in the New Testament by one count, 
Uh, Isaiah was quoted six to seven times, Jeremiah five times, Lamentations no times, and Ezekiel two times, and Daniel five times. Uh, these figures reveal the continual uh, relevance of the book of Isaiah as we live in this new covenant. And it is, I've been called the fifth gospel because of the numerous uh, prophecies that are required uh, to fulfill the messianic era in the New Testament. Isaiah prophesied during this time, uh, this times of God's people, that his prophetic call uh, came in the year of King Uzziah, that when you, King Uzziah died, uh, which had been about 40 or uh, 740 B.C., Uzziah was also Azariah, and the final historical event recorded in the prophet is the death of Shennacherib, which is uh, in uh, 681 B.C., and that makes a lengthy period of his ministry. The text under consideration in our lesson today follows a prophecy that warns King Hezekiah of uh, Judah uh, regarding the time when Babylon would carry away Judah's wealth and people to Babylon under captivity. More than a hundred years would pass uh, before that happened, but indeed it did happen. That was the punishment that the Lord had given unto his people because of their sin, followed by comfort in declaring that their punishment would eventually end. The predictions that immediately followed uh, forward more than five centuries for fulfillment. The passage of time from the pronouncement to fulfillment of these prophecies makes for a more valuable study. But the study in our today's text takes us beyond time-bound prophecies in considering the timeless nature of God himself. So as we get into our study this morning, we want to look at first uh, to be able to study the supreme ruler coming out of Isaiah 40th chapter verses 12 and 13 overseeing creation he says who has measured the waters in the hall of his hand and who has meted out the heavens with a span so what Isaiah uh, was trying to get us to understand is that uh, we don't have any foreknowledge of understanding of how God did it, why God did it. And, and so he asked the question, where were you when God meted out uh, the waters in the hollow of his hand? Where were you when he meted out the span of heaven? So it goes back to when he asked Job similar questions. Mm -hmm. You know, where were you when I created the heavens? You know, Job declared that he was understanding so much and why did God put him through so much pain and suffering? And he was saying that, hey, where were you when those things happened? Yeah. So we have no uh, a, a way of understanding the thoughts of God and to be able to look beyond his understanding. Mm. So also we want to look at a certain thing they call parallelism. Mm -hmm. Parallelism is when they take one paragraph and then they show another paragraph that has the same similar message. So he's mm -hmm. telling us here that who measured out the hollow of his hand and who measured out the heaven. So he gave you mm -hmm. two parallel events that happened that you and I had nothing to do with. Only God is able to do that. Amen. And then he says in part B of that uh, verse, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighted out the mountains and scales in the hills of his bowels. Isaiah questioned an answer so obvious that we could not have an answer for it. We don't comprehend how God does what he does, but he does. God does things, so he's continuing to help us to give a picture of God that is far beyond our understanding. Amen. Then possessing full knowledge, verse 13, he said, Who has directed the spirit of the Lord and being his counselor has taught him? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scripture that says, Who has known God and who could be his counselor. Yes. Who could counsel God when he's the all-knowing God? Yes. The yes. word is omniscient. Mm -hmm. Omniscient means he's all-knowing. Mm -hmm. He's an all-knowing God. So who has directed the spirit of God and, and who can counsel God uh, that uh, in his time of knowing? So he's getting us in a place of understanding that God knows all and we mm -hmm. need to be careful of how we sometimes question God when God is doing what he's doing. Because we don't understand it. You know, we, we had the funeral yesterday. We don't understand how death comes in, mm -hmm. how sickness comes in. Mm -hmm. But what we do understand is God said that he would not put more on us than we can bear. Amen. So the only thing we need to do is look and lean and depend on God, trust him in his word, yeah. and, uh, and everything is going to be all right. Yeah. So we have to do that. So we, uh, we don't have any knowledge of God, and we cannot counsel God. The only thing we need to do is just be patient, waiting on God. We're going to get into that, the last verse. 
patiently waiting on God, and then he will be able to provide. Uh, sustaining rule is our second part of our study coming out of 40th chapter 25 through 31 regarding his identity. He says, to whom then will ye liken me or shall I be equal, says the Holy One. So who are you going to compare me to? Uh, uh, where were you when I made the heavens? And where were you when I uh, laid out the uh, foundations of the earth? Where were you? And then he said, who is likened unto me? Who else will you go? Yeah. to get the answers that I can provide to you on, for man. your life, Come for on. your situation. Mm -hmm. Only you. Who is equal to me? No one. In the prophecy, <laughs> he raised this question. He reminds us that we should be extremely cautious with the statements that the God is like because the next word is a result of the creation being compared to something that he created. So he said, don't compare God to the created. See, God is the creator. Mm -hmm. Then we look around, especially when you start looking at um, what we call indigenous religions, like the Indians, they worship the earth, they worship the sun, they worship the ground, mm -hmm. you know, they worship the harvest. Yeah. And he said, don't worship the created. Always worship the creator. You know, we get, we, we get caught up sometimes and we worship everything, but we need yeah. to be careful. Mm -hmm. Only the Holy One is worthy of our worship. Mm -hmm. And he says that I'm a holy God, and him only should I worship. So we look at verse 28a regarding the, his abilities. Uh, verse 26a says, lift up your eyes on high and behold uh, who hath recanted these things and bringeth out their host in number. He said, if you want to understand something, look up. Just look up at the stars at night. Look at their number. The, and, and then... He said that he knows even the hairs of your head. Mm -hmm. He counts them. He knows. Can you imagine a God that knows every blemish, uh -huh. that knows every hair on your head, that knows every problem that you had, everything? Mm -hmm. Lord, you don't know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. He does know what you've been through. Mm -hmm. if, the, if he cannot, cannot lose count mm -hmm. of a star, that is up in heaven that you and I see at night that we have no idea of numbering. He cares about all of them and he created all of them. And he says here, he bring them out of their host by number. A host means a what? A great number. And then he numbers every last one of them. That's how God cares about us. We have a God that cares about us. And, and it says here, regarding his abilities, not only... Does he care about us? He is able. Ain't, ain't that what he said? Mm -hmm. he, regarding his ability, yes. he is able to do those things because of his mighty power. Verse B of that verse said, he calleth them all by name. Mm -hmm. By their greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power and no, not one fell it. He's elsewhere the Bible records the names of the stars and their constellations and whether covered by clouds or not, they are in the sky at night without fail. I don't care whether you see the sun or not, it's up there. Yeah. I don't care whether you see the moon, it's up there. I don't care whether you believe in God or not, he's up there. See, what it says that you 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 don't have to evidence. I think we were talking about trying to evidence with your eyes what God has told you in your heart. Sometimes you may not evidence it with your eyes, but what God will do, he will give you confirmation and assurance that everything that he promised you will be fulfilled. Amen. He said he calleth them by name and by their Amen. greatness of his might. He is strong in power and not one feather. The stars rotate and the sun rotates around the, 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 the universe and, and the earth rotates around the sun and all of the planets rotates around the sun in our universe, in our mm -hmm. galaxy. But the thing about it is, it does it every day and never ends, it never stops. So that's our uh, dependency and assurance that we can have in God. He's right there all the time, ain't he? The time. If the stars are never fails, in their rotation, what can God do? God will never fail us never fail. if we would only put our trust in him. Verse yeah. 27, why says thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? 
Again, he talks about parallelism and testifies this, uh, that the verb say it and speak is parallel one another. If you're going to say it, you got to do it, ain't it? Yep. Yeah, old folks say you got to walk to walk. Talk to talk. And you got to talk to talk. Mm -hmm. If you walk and talk, don't Man. align. Mm -hmm. That means everything that you say is in vain. Amen. Can't nobody trust your words by what you say. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it has nothing to do with... Uh, let me see. Let me, let me try to make it like this. It has nothing to do with uh, whether you are you're, you're preaching or teaching or, or trying to lead people in a spiritual manner. You're going to lead people by example, no. or whether you are trying to or not. Right. <laughs> see, right people, I'm not a teacher. You are a teacher. Because mm. people see Somebody and is. people do. Mm. They say, my way is not hid from the Lord. See, God has not hid uh, himself from us. Neither we can we hide ourselves from him. Mm -hmm. He's there, made himself available to us. Mm -hmm. He has not hid himself. His ear is leaning toward us each and every day to hear what our, look, we always talk about uh, we get our needs. Scripture said he'll give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. If they are lying, with his will. Yeah. Right. All right. Verse 28 said, Hast thou not known and hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, mm -hmm. neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding? Mm -hmm. He said, Have you not heard? Have you not known uh, that, that, that God is that everlasting God, the Father? He is the creator of everything, mm -hmm. even to the ends of the earth, and he don't get tired. Mm -hmm. He don't faint. Uh, he ain't weary. Mm -hmm. he, weary in, in one sense mean tired, mm -hmm. but here weary could mean he don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. he's got this, ain't he? Mm -hmm. he? He's telling us later on in the script, he's telling us not to be weary. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Why worry about something that you cannot affect? Mm -hmm. You want to have a change, but you cannot affect that change. You need to talk to the one that can affect change. So he said, there is no searching of his understanding. God doesn't have to uh, read books to get understanding. Mm -hmm. he, he is all, and he's in all, and he knows all. He said he does not tire. He does not become exalted. He neither slumbers nor sleep. He, uh, God rested on the seventh day, but that wasn't he rested because he was tired. What he did, he ended his work on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. They say he rested. God doesn't get tired when he needs rest. <laughs> that does uh, imply that he was weary. It means that uh, God doesn't worry. He doesn't worry about things. At this point, we should take special note how the scripture uses weary uh, in our text. He said that God is not running out of engine. He's not running out of energy. He does not say that, hey, I done ran out of energy and I, I don't have enough to get the job done. God has enough to get the job done. But they said, on the other hand, God could have been, when he said he was weary, he could have been fed up. Fed up with you, brother. <laughs> you know how with children and with family and with friends and work associates, sometimes you get weary. Just fed up. That means I'm fed up. God's get fed up, and, and which it, it happens sometimes, don't it? God will get fed up, and then what he'll do, he'll do something, then all of a sudden you say, why did he do that? He warned you. God just don't, he ain't like us, he don't snap. You know how we do, we snap. We snap, but God don't snap. God don't snap. But he does do, he gets fed up. Yes, and then when yes. he fed up, huh, uh, God will be able to uh, mm -hmm. straighten you up real good, won't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then regarding our need, verse 29, mm -hmm. he giveth power to the faint, and then them that have no might, he increases their strength. See, God will give you what you ask for. Mm -hmm. I think we said, uh, probably in our message later on this morning, you have not because you ask not. not. You, and then we said, when you do ask for it, it's for you to do some things that are not conforming to his will for your life. Come on, you know, man. I, I want a brand new car. No, you said you needed a car. Mm -hmm. It's a difference between wanting a car 
and needing a car because God will give you what you need, but he'll also give you the desires of your heart. But if the desires of your heart don't align with his will for your life, he ain't going to give you what you desire because he said that you want to running away on lusts of the flesh and lusts of the eyes and the prides of life. He said that those things are not good regarding our need. He said he give us that power to the faint. Mm -hmm. The faint means that what? We're weak, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So he gives power to the weak and to them that have no might he increases their strength. So God gives us strength to be able to accomplish things that we cannot accomplish on our own. And then he gives power to us to be able to do things that we never thought that we were able to do. Mm -hmm. See? It's amazing. How did I do that? Sometimes you do some things you wonder, how did I do it? Because God gave you the strength that's outside of your physical strength. All right? Verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He said that in your own power, even young people that thought that they had all of the strength and all of the power, even the young people, they're going to faint. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't go to young folk and think that they got the power, they got the ability, they can do this now. Young people got the same problem you got. They have no power to do what God can do. Right. Only God can do that. He said right. when young folk going to faint and young folk going to be weary, and then the young men, that means that what? You think you got a little bit. <laughs> you think you done did a few things, you've accomplished a few things on your own, mm -hmm. and then you think you're a young man enough to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was telling them some things yesterday at the funeral, but I remember the day when uh, I was talking to my daddy, and I was telling daddy I'm a man there. Mm -hmm. A man down there, and you know, I'm paying for my own car. You know, I, I'm, I'm working at GE, you know, making $2.10 an hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, they ain't never made 5 cents an hour. I make $2.10 an hour, then I'm my own man. You know what I was doing? I was sleeping in this bed, eating food off his table. Mm -hmm. Huh? You know, and, 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 then, and then I was driving out of mama's gas because my, my gas money ran out on Friday night. Yep. But what I'm saying is, that sometimes young men will utterly fail when you think you are young enough to do it on your own. See, you, 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 you ain't old enough yet. You haven't gotten there yet. But he says that young men will fail. But then when we get to 31, he says, but they that wait upon the Lord, eh? Mm -hmm. They shall renew their strength, shall mount upon wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. See, Whenever we're dealing with something that is too big with us, what we need to do is not to rush. Mm -hmm. The word says wait. I like to spell it different. I like to spell it W-E-I-G-H-T. Mm -hmm. See, take that weight, mm -hmm. that burden, mm -hmm. and put it on the Lord. I, I told him at the funeral yesterday, he said, send it back, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Send it back. I can't handle it, Lord. I'm sending it back to you because I know that you're big enough, you, you're strong enough, you're God enough to handle it. I can't handle it on my own, so I'm sending it back to you. This weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, this weight, the, this problem, these burdens, the, the, these issues that I'm having, they are so heavy. Lord, I got to put this weight on you. But then look what he said. When I put this weight on you, Lord, you renew my strength. Mm -hmm. huh. Can you imagine when you let it go? Mm -hmm. when, when you let that weight go, all of a sudden you're stronger because you're not carrying that weight yeah. of that burden. He said that once you carry that weight and once you release that weight, he said that you can mount upon wings, wings like eagles. Like eagles. Huh? You can yeah. mount upon wings like uh -huh. eagles. He said you can run. And don't get tired, ain't it? Yep. Now you can walk yes. and don't faint. Yes. See, if don't we would only no. put our trust in the Lord, I believe God will make this thing all right. He said the need to wait on the Lord is found in many places, uh, even in the Old Testament. You remember when he told Moses? He told Moses to be still. Mm -hmm. 
You know what that means? Wait. Right. He said, wait. Wait. And watch the salvation of the Lord. Right. You know, he said that I don't need to fight. Right. I, I don't need to run. I, I, I don't need uh, weapons of war. Only thing God told me to do is wait. Wait, wait on the Lord. The he said God. that then I'll renew your strength. <laughs> And then you should be able to mount up on wings. You'll be able to run and not get weary. And you'll be able to walk and not faint. Now think about walk. Walk is relative to your Christian life. Walk is relative to your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you can walk now. I can live now without fainting. Fainting means that life got the best of me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to faint. It doesn't, mm -hmm. Don't faint because he said that God is with you. If you would be able to let him take the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, let him take that weight. And then once he takes that weight, your strength is renewed. Then you can be able to run. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be weary. Nope. You can walk upright yes. and don't have to be worried about getting tired. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord will do for you. So this imagery about mountain on wings of eagles is your ability to soar above your situation. Huh? You'll be able to soar above your situation if you will be able to allow that weight, that burden to be able to be put up back, send it back to God where he's able to handle it. He's able to be able to carry that weight for you to be able to help you get through your situation. Mm -hmm. So as we get to our conclusion, he says no shortage. He said, when the impact of the coronavirus began, the pandemic began to be felt during the spring of 2020, one result was shortages of various commodities, issues with business codes and logistics limitations meant that goods were not readily available, stores ran out, and even limited purchases to certain customers to one item each. Many customers found themselves frustrated and being unable to purchase the things that they wanted or sometimes even outright needed with the conveniences to which they were accustomed to. Our passage today reminds us that God that we worship and serve has never been subject to any weariness or weakness or attrition or, or scarcity of his resources. And, and, and he said, the thousand the cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. And if he is your father, I don't know whether you got a thousand, but a few hundred got to be your inheritance, ain't it? Oh, he says that everything that yeah. he has belongs to you. Yeah. He's not scarce in his resources. Mm -hmm. This affirms that God's uh, uh, sustaining power and his promise to uh, provide us with strength to grow and not be weary has uh, no expiration date. Did y'all see that? <laughs> huh? Ain't no expiration date. His Strength does not wear out. His power does not cease. And his power is something that is never running out. God's power and strength is available to us today just as well as it was available unto them then. But here, a caution we must interject concerning what recorded. He says, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Mm -hmm. See, the only restriction regarding our access to God, his resources, is our own sin and our own willingness, unwillingness to put our trust in him. Mm -hmm. See, you don't have because you didn't ask. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have really because what? You didn't trust him. Amen. That he would be able to provide what you need. See, God got what you need. Everything you need, God got. Only thing you need to do is put your trust in him. Amen. So our prayer today is, Father, we thank you for the record that you left for us by the prophet Isaiah. May we realize fully that with the New Testament, we now is immeasurable more insight in your nature than Isaiah did. Help us to take neither you or your word for granted. Renew our strength as only you are able to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the household of faith say it. Yeah. Amen. So our thought to remember is there is never any power shortage with God. There is never any power shortage with God.
God bless you. May heaven never smile upon you. We're going to end our broadcast for a minute. Uh, we're going to get back to our broadcast uh, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm.